If it was true then, why wouldn't it be true now? You need only the courage to follow your heart. Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the best tributes and toasts from movie weddings, engagement parties, and rehearsal dinners. Uh, we're all uh, different, but uh, in the end, uh, we're all fruit. <laughs> Number 10, Charles's best man speech four weddings and a funeral. With so many weddings in one movie, you know one of them has to include a great speech. We have to shout out the unintentionally hilarious tribute from Wedding Number no. Two's best man. I, I congratulated him because all his other girlfriends have been such complete dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Although may I say how, how, how delighted we are to have so many of them here this evening. <laughs> But our favourite speech in this classic rom-com goes to Charles, played by Hugh Grant, and his most charmingly awkward. The famously self-deprecating actor pokes fun at the groom, his friends, and of course himself, in this funny but sweet toast. This is only the, the second time I've, I've ever been a best man. I, I hope I did the job all right that time. The couple in question are at least still talking to me. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, they're, they're not actually... Um, talking to each other. He also draws a lot of laughs and a few horrified looks from the attendees. We can understand why this committed bachelor caught Andy McDowell's eye. Bewildered awe of, of anyone who makes this kind of commitment that Angus and Laura have made today. I know I couldn't do it and uh, I think it's wonderful they can. So anyway, back to, back to Angus and those sheep. Number nine, Dean's rehearsal dinner toast serendipity. When someone tries to be funny while giving a toast, they often just end up sounding awkward, or getting way too personal. But in this scene, Jeremy Piven's character actually manages that balancing act perfectly. Everything feels great, stars are aligned, body and spirit are in balance. For my friend Jonathan Traeger, that person was me. <laughs> He delivers plenty of jokes, but instead of going after the bride or embarrassing the couple, he makes fun of himself and his long-time friendship with the groom. Dean shows how well he knows Jonathan while also celebrating his friendship with Hallie. He had found her, the woman he was meant to be with. And if anyone is qualified to know when he met his soulmate, it would be me, his first wife. <laughs> He's not afraid to be a little goofy, but he doesn't get obnoxious. It's the type of speech you'd hope for from a true best friend. I tell you what, I tell you something, my friends, if I had to lose Johnny to anyone, I can't imagine a more perfect woman than Hallie. Cheers, Cheers to both of you. Number eight, a sister's poetic tribute in her shoes. Maggie and Rose might be siblings, but they couldn't be more different. Maggie can't hold down a job and takes advantage of Rose's generosity. After a major argument, the two stop speaking and go their separate ways. <laughs> Get out of my life! <sighs> but thanks to their loving grandmother, they reconcile just before Rose's wedding. During the ceremony, Maggie surprises Rose with a heartfelt reading of an E.E. E. Cummings poem. I fear no fate, for you are my fate, my sweet. I want no world, for beautiful, you are my world, my true. The moment is particularly significant since Maggie once had trouble reading because of her dyslexia. It's a beautiful ending to a poignant story about the love between sisters. Is the wonder that's keeping the stars apart. Number seven, The Brother's Drunken Rant, The Wedding Singer. It's an Adam Sandler comedy, so you know someone is going to make a fool of themselves at some point. Singer Robbie takes a break from his set so the groom's brother David can make a toast. When my brother, Harold, asked me to be the best man at his wedding, I was like, oh, of course, man, because you've always been there for me. Unfortunately, David is pretty intoxicated, and he seizes the opportunity to air some grievances with his family. Because Harold, you know, he's always been the dependable one, and I've always been the screwed up one. Right, Dad? <laughs> Why can't you be more like your brother? Robbie wisely steps in before David can do too much damage. The movie follows up this scene with another hilariously depressing rant from Robbie himself, who's just been left at the altar by his fiancée. You know, it's funny, some of us will never ever find true love. Like take, for instance, me. 
And I'm pretty sure that guy right there. We can't blame him for being heartbroken, but we're glad real life weddings don't usually feature so much drama. <laughs> hey, you're doing good. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. It's because I'm the best guitar player in the world. There. Yeah. <laughs> Self taught, no lessons. Thank you very much, Pop. All right. They'll be divorced in a year. Number six, dueling engagement party speeches. Bridesmaids. How about two toasts for the price of one? When Maid of Honor Annie meets the bride's gorgeous new friend Helen, it's the start of a fierce rivalry. At the engagement party, Annie gives a short but sincere tribute to her best friend, which Helen follows up with a slightly more impressive one. We just sat and drank wine and ate peanut brittle, and I shared things with you that I've never shared with anyone, and you made me realize how I can trust people again. Not to be outdone, Annie reclaims the microphone, kicking off a battle of speeches. After Helen shares a beautiful saying in Thai, Annie breaks out the high school Spanish, which she totally mangles. And so I would just like to say to you and to everyone here, gracias para vivar en la casa, en las escuelas. The whole thing ends in an awkward singing duet that leaves the entire party scratching their heads. That's what friends are for. In good, good times and bad times, I'll be on your side forevermore. Number five, Harper's heartfelt speech, the best man. By the time his wedding rolls around, Lance isn't on great terms with his best man Harper. He just found out that his fiance cheated on him with Harper years ago as revenge for Lance constantly screwing around. Sure, Brian meant the world to her. But she wasn't going to play the fool any longer. She wanted revenge. It even escalates to a fist fight right before the big day. Harper manages to convince Lance not to call off the ceremony, though the groom still isn't happy with his friend. At the reception, Harper gives an earnest toast to the couple, reminding them that what happened in the past is less important than the love they have now. I have learned the importance of seizing the moment because you can't go back. You can never go back. You have to live for today. It earns back Lance's respect and helps Harper realize that it's time to commit to his own girlfriend. You just have to step out on faith and believe that what you have built together is worth preserving. Number four, Samantha's perfect toast sex and the city. There's a reason Samantha was so many people's favorite character in the series. As a devoted friend, she decides not to share her personal stories about Carrie at the rehearsal dinner. I know it's tradition at the rehearsal dinner for the maid of honor to reveal embarrassing things about the bride. <laughs> but in our group, we never kiss and tell. <laughs> Instead, she gives an eloquent toast to Mr. Big. She acknowledges the group's concerns about the on-again, off-again relationship, but ultimately ends with a touching remark about their love. There were times when we had our doubts about this gorgeous man. But after careful observation over the last hundred years, <laughs> my doubts are over. And in true Samantha fashion, she takes zero crap from a rude heckler who keeps interrupting her. We'd all be lucky to have a friend like Samantha at our wedding parties and in our lives. So here's to the groom, a man who finally got carried away. <laughs> Number three, a long ceremony, The Princess Bride. This might be the most famous movie wedding speech ever, although most people probably wouldn't want to hear it at their own wedding. So pleasure, your wow. Skip to the end. Have you the win? Here comes my Wesley now. As the crowd gathers for Prince Humperdinck's marriage to Buttercup, a man credited only as the impressive clergyman enters, looking solemn. A hush falls over the group, and then Peter Cook delivers the most perfectly timed laugh line in the history of cinema. Marriage. Marriage is what brings us together today. He follows this with a prolonged sermon on true love, oblivious to the commotion outside and the bride's obvious distress. What else do we need to say? There's a reason this movie is one of the all-time classics. And you, Princess Barakwa? Man and wife! Say man and wife! Man and wife. Escort the bride to the honeymoon suite. I'll be there shortly.
Number 2. Sophie's Letter – Letters to Juliet Decades ago, a young woman named Claire left a letter in an Italian courtyard, hoping fate would help her decide whether to run away with the young man she loved. Fifty years later, Sophie finds the letter and answers it, encouraging Claire to pursue her lost love. What were you thinking? I was thinking that she deserved an answer. Yeah, 50 years ago, maybe, not now. I, I'm sorry, I didn't know true love had an expiration date. Miraculously, Claire and the man reunite and decide to spend their remaining years together. At their wedding, Claire reads Sophie's reply, an inspiring message about taking chance and following your heart. I don't know how your story ended, but if what you felt then was true love, then it's never too late. The scene becomes even more romantic when you know that the man sitting next to Vanessa Redgrave is her real-life husband, Franco Nero. I love to cross oceans for, but I'd like to believe, if I ever were to feel it, that I'd have the courage to seize it. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Mr. Portocarlos's Touching Speech My Big Fat Greek Wedding Ian and Tula's engagement doesn't go totally smoothly. Tula's parents aren't happy that Ian isn't Greek. Ian's parents have a hard time fitting in with Tula's huge, gregarious family. It's delicious. Stiniasas! Stiniasas! Opa! Opa! <laughs> but at the wedding, Tula's father addresses the guests and shows that he's finally accepted his son-in-law. Although Mr. Portocarlos gets some unintended laughs from the audience, his love for his daughter and the newest member of his family is clear. The root of the word Miller is a Greek word. A, a, a Miller comes from the Greek word Milo, which is mean apple. So there you go. <laughs> it's the perfect wedding speech. Funny, sincere, heartwarming, and best of all, short. We have uh, apple and orange. Uh, we're all uh, different, but uh, in the end, uh, we all fruit. <laughs> Any dads who might someday want to speak at their own kids' ceremony can take a lesson from my big fat Greek wedding. Which wedding speech brought a tear to your eye? Let us know in the comments. We are your world, and we will cheer you on with delight in our eyes as you achieve your wildest dreams, so raise a glass. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.